pocket dump. What? Pocket pocket dumping. Hi guys. We're the guys from From the Middle Podcast. We're your From the Middle guys. My name is Corey, and then, no, it's not. <laughs> screwed up. My name, hey, guys. That's the part you screwed up. <laughs> your own name? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, wait. It gets hot in the studio. Deep breath, deep breath. A little delirious. Hey, everybody. What, what voice are you doing? This is, this is my my intro voice. Your PBS morning cartoon? Are you, <laughs> Whoa. Wake up. With From the Middle podcast. All right. From Columbus, Ohio. We are three dudes who are middle guys <laughs> who started a podcast. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Much to your chagrin. Kendall, Dylan, and Corey are our names. This is like a middle school announcements in the morning. That's right. <laughs> Over the PA. That's right. Hey, kids. This is, this is how professional this is. Hey, kids. Welcome to episode 14. Actual 14. Actual 14. That's a 13 <sighs> reference. If you don't get it, go back and listen to 13. And if you do get it, go back and listen to it again. Yeah, so don't don't worry. You are listening to the actual 14th. Actual 14th. Actual 14th podcast. Yeah. Of ours. No, seriously. Uh, was, so we spent a lot of time in episode 12.99999 <laughs> repeating. Yes. Um, talking about some of our updates, we got we we went off on tangents, talked about a lot of other stuff. We never got around to Corey, who had his own trip and vacation and experiences out to 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 the great state of Colorado. Yeah, which is okay. I'm okay that we didn't get to me. I felt like I talked a lot um, career wise and other stuff, so I'm okay that right that we didn't get. There. So we're going to do another Corey episode now. But here we go. Here's another one. <laughs> I've got more questions. See how that works out? I strategically <laughs> didn't say anything oh, we don't so that this one could be all about me. <laughs> That's not how the song goes. And all this is for me. That is not how the song goes. For my glory and that, my... Nope. Okay. Newt, newt. Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tick. <laughs> You're a ticking me off. <laughs> Was that punny? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we did go to Colorado, so... So this summer. has been an uncommonly busy uh, summer for the Hubble family. Um, as you know, if you listened to episode, I believe it was 11, we went to Honduras, or maybe it was 12, doesn't matter. And um, so that was like a family mission trip. And um, this trip to Colorado was our actual family vacation. And then later this summer, Sherry and I are doing an anniversary trip. But anyways, Colorado was a ton of fun. We actually drove out with three kids, 26 hours door that, to door. That sounds fun. Yeah. Um, if you talk to anybody about driving out west on pretty much I-70 the whole time, everybody talks about how boring Kansas is. <laughs> Sorry for our <laughs> Kansas listeners. Um, but your state is not exciting to drive through. I don't think they have internet. <laughs> so Lily, on our way back, my 12-year-old goes... Um, do people actually live in Kansas? <laughs> or no, oh. do it. No, she said, do any people actually live in Kansas? Because <laughs> all you see is like farms and windmills. Um, but yes, we drove out. It was 26 hours door to door. Um, we left at like four in the afternoon on a Thursday and drove straight out. Uh, I took a 90 minute nap in Kansas. Um, and then we made it out to, it's called the Twin Lakes area or Leadville, Colorado. It's about three hours west of Denver. And um, did a vacation rental by owner. Those are really cool if you've never done one. Uh, VRBO and uh, with a couple other families pitched in and just got a big cabin um, right on the water um, with the mountains in the background. Stunning. Uh, had a great trip. Um, if you know much about the Colorado or Denver area, do you guys know what 14ers are? I think the only thing people know about Colorado, Colorado is pot. I know so, that about Colorado. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Uh, it's in the news. What else? What are the things you say? What do you mean, pot? Denver. Colo you... Colorado, the state of Colorado, uh -huh. has legal 
pot. Marijuana is, is Marijuana. what he's referring to. Oh, okay. Yeah. They do have that. Do you guys know what 14ers are? No. This episode. Do you guys know what 14ers are? Never heard of it. Yeah, they we're on 14er right now. Yeah. So there are 53, count them, 53 mountains in Colorado. What are you doing? Eating some Tic Tacs. What are you doing? <laughs> While I'm talking? I'm just kidding. Is that rude? <laughs> are you guys, are you you guys serious? <laughs> do you want, you want one? No. What's the blue flavor, though? Try it. No. <laughs> you just had that in your mouth. <laughs> It's called Frosty Mint. It says Is it a new flavor? It says it says new on the thing. I've never seen the blue ones. Yeah. Normally I'm a uh, I'm a white or orange Tic Tac guy. Orange all the way. They've got uh, they got blue ones now. I like them. If you're into <laughs> tasting notes <laughs> on Tic Tacs, I would say that there's a coconutty flavor on the outer shell that then that then ends with like a a cool mint interior of the Tic Tac. It's not really like a sharp, biting kind of mint. Okay. More like a, more like a butter mint kind of thing. But it starts with a coconut note. So if you're listening to this podcast episode, let us know on our social media Here's what little, kind of Tic Tacs you like. Little Tic Tac ASMR for you right here. You're welcome. Okay. Anyway, there's 53 mountains in Colorado and something about 14ers. Yes, so there are 53... I can't go... Okay, hold on. <laughs> there are 50... I'm sorry, did I interrupt? <laughs> nope. It, I called it out. I could have oh, okay. just let it go, but I was, I, I was distracted. There are 53 mountains in Colorado above 14,000 feet. Okay, got it. So what people like to do if they live in that area or vacation there frequently, they like to try to tick off as many of the 53 as they can. <laughs> So it's, there's a whole subculture around hiking 14ers. Okay. Following? Yes. Got it. Four years ago, um, we did one of them. I did one of them, Mount Beerstadt. So when we knew we were going back out there, we're like, let's do a 14er. So there were some kids in the families that, um, that were going together on this cabin to, to uh, Colorado. So Lily, my 12-year-old, said she wanted to try it as well. Now, it's, it's no joke. Like, it's... A nine mile round trip, and I think you're climbing anywhere from 2,500 to 4,000 feet in half of that, right? Wow. So like four and a half miles. So it's it's like legit. You should probably train. <laughs> um, and there's a real thing called elevation sickness, where at okay. that height, you're not just short of breath. You can get lightheaded, dizzy, throw up all kinds of, get delirious at that elevation. Yeah. So we thought, okay, let's, uh, we saved it for the last day, I believe. <clears throat> um, we were going to do Mount Elbert. And because I said, we're going to do, that's a clue. So there were 15 of us that did the hike. I posted a little bit about it on my Facebook page. I did a live feed a couple times. Um, so we were kind of bringing up the rear. Lily and I were behind. The other 13 were doing pretty okay. The young kids, teenagers, were like way ahead of us. So you get above the tree line. So now you're way up there. Yeah. And then we got above 13,000 feet when Lily s starts to get dizzy. Oh, man. And the thing you have to keep in mind is like you have to get back. <laughs> you, right, have to ha yeah. you have to have your wits about you enough and enough energy to get back because you ain't carrying each other yeah so she says she starts to get dizzy so we we just camp out basically on the side of the mountain we're up in the snow level right now i mean you start out in t-shirts and now you're in snow right right <clears throat> and the rest of our party went up ahead and they ended up summiting um lily just started throwing up and it was n no dice so we we had to cut our trip short no big deal we'll uh Hubble's never never say die. We live to fight another day. We'll summit Elbert a different time. But it was still an amazing experience. I got some photos from up there that are like, you know, stunning. You're just taking panoramic photos that look like, you know, a Coors commercial or a, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's amazing. But uh, Colorado, I, I mean, just the views are, are spectacular. So one fun thing um, that was the 14 er story. Um, one fun thing is we got to go to Aspen. So you... A little place called... A little place Aspen. called Aspen. 
I posted that quote from Dumb and Dumber when I checked in <laughs> to, to Aspen. Some people like that. Not the Rockies would be a little rockier than this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you go from um, Twin Lakes, you go up to Independence Pass, which is only open in the non-winter months because mm-hmm. it closes during the winter. And then you go down the mountains into Aspen. So it's about a 45-minute drive from Twin Lakes to Aspen. If you've not been to Aspen, that place is insane, the level of money that's there. I mean, imagine this little town that's in the winter. It's the height of... uh, It's a ski town. Mm -hmm. But then in the summer, this is where people probably have their third and fourth homes. Okay. The the stores, it's like brick, cobblestone streets for part of it. And the stores are like Valentino, Dolce & Gabbana, Armani. Like the level of money there is stupid. And is that pass the only way to get there? So in the winter, do they have to do like I think they have to go. Or? No, I think they have to go around. I think they have to go like the long way around or they have to just fly to the other side of the mountain. I'm not sure. That's a good question. How you get there in the winter. Um, but anyway, Aspen was, I mean, crazy just to just to people watch and like see the levels of money that were there. Yeah. Um, tons of fun. Um, so then one thing that, that brought up a funny question or a thought that I had similar to my do you think next year people are going to start saying the 20s <laughs> I had a lot of time to drive you guys <laughs> I had a lot of time in my head while I was driving um, okay we uh, one day at Twin Lakes we found this uh, a boat rental place and so we went and it's just the boat rental place is just a guy named Jeff and a camper <laughs> and his dog and a van Okay. And he has stand-up paddle boards that you can rent, kayaks, and canoes. But it's just this guy, Jeff. Yeah. So here's my, my observation about Jeff. I love the guy. I took a selfie with him. I'm actually going to draw him because he's such a character. And here's what I mean when I say that. If you, so if you're a fan of acting at all, um, especially comedic actors, and, and I'm thinking specifically about sketch comedy like Mad TV and SNL, Mm-hmm. A lot of those actors will base the characters that they create off of actual people. Sure. Yeah. So if you met, do you remember on Mad TV, Mo Collins? She played Stuart's mom. Yeah. And she also played Lorraine, mm-hmm. the lady that was like, oh, oh, yeah. Right. So, so Mo Collins was on the Tiger Belly podcast the other day because she was on with Bobby Lee, blah, blah, blah. And Mo Collins was saying how she based um, Lorraine and Stuart's mom off of just like, she grew up in Minnesota, so she kind of based that character off of people that she grew up with, middle-aged women in and around Minnesota, and just put them all together into sort of one exaggerated right, caricature of those people. Does that sure. make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeff was like a complete version of somebody's developed character. He was like this cool, <laughs> like probably 20-something, early 30s. He looked like a surfer but he was in the mountains and he just hangs out in this camper and rents boats. And he was just the most interesting. So, so my question was like, have you ever met or seen somebody and you're kind of looking them, looking at them with your mouth open and in a smile, like you're just observing them. Like they are the completed version <laughs> of somebody's caricature of a character. <laughs> Does that make sense? Hmm. Like the voice is perfect. The clothes are perfect. They're just, all of the perfect ratios of everything that would you feel like you're <laughs> you're watching a developed and well thought out completed character. You've yeah. probably worked with somebody like that. Um, you might be related to somebody like that, right? But you know what I mean when I say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. feel like you're you feel like you're looking at a at a character. Anyway, yeah. I'm sure I've had moments in my life where I've just said, "You can't be a real person." <laughs> That's yeah, kind of yeah. what I mean. Yeah. It's that. It's like you're, you know, th- there's no way this isn't a shtick of some kind. This is. Because <laughs> even those ladies that Mo Collins was basing her character off of, they mm-hmm. weren't even complete versions of that. Right. She yeah, had right. to massage it a little bit to get it to the point where it was tick done. And then right. it was like, that is the fully fleshed out version. And it, that's w- when you get to meet somebody that looks and sounds and talks and has the catchphrases of what seems like, I don't know. Maybe that was a weird. No, 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 no I, I totally get that. Like, there's, there's a couple of, there, there's a couple that are in mind right now, and the, the is one of them the guy who put salt on your microphone? Oh, oh, he's another one. Yeah, crazy Pete, crazy Pete. I mean, come on, you couldn't make up 
Crazy P. Exactly. Yeah, no, Crazy Pete is a, is a caricature of a person for sure. Um, there's others that I won't mention. <laughs> yeah, there's some but, that you can't. <laughs> but, be thinking, because I'm going to ask you too. But uh, but no, him. There, I also, like, I also in my head have, like, uh, like, there's a couple preachers that I could, th- that I can think of yeah. that, yep. that are, like, types of preachers. And then there are, there's a couple of them that I can think of that, like, man. You are the quintessential Southern Baptist yes. preacher. Yes. That is who you are. I'm glad to hear you say that because I was starting to think it was just like an artist brain thing. Like I'm thinking of how I would draw them in my head. Right. And I'm thinking of the way that I would exaggerate their features or something. But it's cool to know that that I'm not alone in thinking yeah. that you just everybody walks by some people or meets some people and goes, Oh my gosh, you're like all of the variables yeah. in one body. No. And I've, I've got, I've got a couple like personal examples that, that I won't mention instead. I'll just let all of my, all of my friends and people <laughs> who know me try just to wonder. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that's what people mean when they say, Oh, he's such a character. Like, do, do you think that's uh, no, what people I think mean? that's different? I think that's less specific. Okay. Yeah. Do you have some, Dylan, of people that you've met or worked with or that you're like, they're yeah. like... I'm sure the the first one that kind of came to mind was, uh, I've been in sales a while. There was somebody that I worked with regularly that um, r- retired, always came in in the full track suit, uh, <laughs> matching top, bottom, same color oh, track yeah, suit, yeah. right? Yeah, and I'm, then I'm there sort of you. the neck jowl that sort of like moves with his head as yeah. it kind of bobs around. <laughs> Um, always came in at the same time, S- predictable, just quirky old guy walk, you know, just, yeah. How was his chest hair game? Didn't want to deal. Uh, he didn't, he, it actually, he would zip pretty high on okay, the jacket. Never, never mind that. Um, and didn't want to talk or work with anybody else. It's like, you help me. So you're going to help me forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind. Okay. Uh, just kind of what you'd expect if you were building out a character for a sitcom. Yeah. Like, yeah, super nice, but that's one that came to mind. It's yeah. just this stereotypical retired tracksuit, you know. Yeah, And I think that's why those archetypes or those characters are so funny, because we all are picturing, <clears throat> even now some of you are probably picturing people in your life that are similar to the one of, one of the people we just mentioned, or you have your own, and it works better for storytelling and comedy because you're, paint- you're painting the picture very vividly of that, that person. Sure. Like, yeah. like that's why there are all these memes right now of, of the middle aged mom that's like, I want to talk to your manager. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's always we, the short, we, the short yeah, blonde the haircut. Short cut with we have some it kind of highlight as simple. Yeah, we have it described as simply as a haircut. Yeah, that's pretty. There's much, the man talk to your manager. I want to talk to your manager haircut. Yeah, that's funny. So, hashtag thoughts from the middle. Tell us about characters in your life and tag them. <laughs> Tag them if you want. <laughs> Tag them if you want. Uh, send us pictures. Yes. We would love to see uh, the characters. We always, in your life. We've mentioned it before, and we, we always want to know how many relationships we have ruined. <laughs> I thought about this the other day. There are so many stories that I have <laughs> that I want so badly to share on this podcast that I have to figure out a way to either ask the person ahead of time right. if I can tell the story. Or I have to ensure that they'll never <laughs> listen to it. It's just like not even bad stories or like mean spirited stories, just really funny stories that yeah. I wanna that I wanna tell. Or I have this secret desire to one day do an open mic night at a comedy club. Um, I've actually jotted down some like thoughts since I haven't formulated them to the point of like a set list or like a like an actual set, but yeah. I want to just try it as a bucket list kind of fun sure, thing. Yeah. And some of the, some of the things I would tell in that are actual s- stories of actual people. So I would need to clear that with them first. But so if you get a phone call from me in the next couple of weeks, it's, <laughs> it's, it's material for the, from that'd the be, middle podcast. Be fun. Anyway, so Colorado was great. Um, Lily and <laughs> sadly ended up having her, having symptoms of her elevation sickness for a couple days and the thing about that is, man, it doesn't like let up until you get back down to a reasonable elevation. Yeah. So, so that they tell you like it's probably not going to let up until you get like east of Denver and start getting back to to lower altitudes. Oh man. Yeah. That's a bummer. But high note, 
we got to go back to uh, Snooze. We talked about in the food episode, mm. episode eight, I think it was. We talked yeah. about Snooze being one of my favorite places. And we got to go there and found out that they're multiplying like, like crazy. There's a ton of snoozes now. So California, Colorado, Texas, Arizona, and North Carolina, you all have snoozes oh, in your state. And you should try to go find one. Cause snooze, if you're listening, Ohio. Yes. Specifically Columbus. I'm going to tag yeah. Snooze and yeah. AM Eatery and let them know that they need to set up shop right here in the great old uh, Buckeye State. But um, We've definitely got some breakfast food. Like, uh, I live close to Super Chefs for a while yeah. in Columbus. Yeah. Oh, man. Which uh, started in Kentucky. I didn't know that. Oh, that's... Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I started in, uh, I think, Louisville. I could be wrong. I'll fact check that later. But yeah. I know it started in Kentucky. Wild Eggs is another one that was we talked about that was in Louisville, but also in Colorado. I, yeah. Those people love their breakfast food. Yeah. Yeah. So um, snooze, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. So we did a. I did a little uh, Facebook live video from our from the middle page. Um, Sherry and Chloe and Case were in there. Did a little family video um, for you guys to just show you guys what what we were talking about. Put a visual uh, with the story. So that was cool. Um, Kendall, you talked about something earlier that I wanted to. I think this will segue nicely. So one of the things I like to do when I'm packing for for work trips or or family trips is to like set out all the stuff that I'm going to carry with me. Um, and then for the 14 er we did it as well. Like we have a whole day's worth of food and snacks and right. it's fun to just like set everything out and I'm weird. So I have everything at like nice 90 degree angles and set it out on the bed so I can see what I'm going to take with me. And you were talking about what was the term you used for it? I didn't even know it was a term. The, the term that I used for, for, uh, for sharing what your personal situation is there is is pocket dumping. <laughs> Which, of course, doesn't sound like what it is. <laughs> but tell us what it actually is. No, all right. So pocket... I'll just, I'll just, a pocket dump is nothing more than how you show people what your, your everyday carry, um, also known as EDC, is. EDC. EDC. And this is something that, that a lot of guys... I mean, I would say probably most guys are, if not interested in, have at least thought about or have dabbled in. Um, or they do it without putting a name to it. Or they do it without putting a name to it. But there are a community of guys who like who try to like fine tune their their everyday carry game and 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 uh, kind of like break it down into a science. And uh, to the point there's there's a YouTube channel I follow uh, called Best Damn EDC. Yeah. Um which was started by a blog that I used to follow before he he started his his YouTube channel, and and there's other communities out there likewise. So this is an, an actual thing. Like you can go and learn about like what's the best type of pen to carry and which one is is best for you and that kind of thing. Uh, so it is it is something that has interested me to the point that I actually have like researched products and have tried um, a few different things and I have it narrowed down now to. Honestly, I, I've had the same EDC now for for a little over a year now. And this I've does not have to stuff. include firearms, to be clear. It does not have to include firearms. It certainly can. Yeah, because I just I just looked on Instagram just now. Yeah. And there are nine point six million posts for the hashtag EDC. Yeah. A lot of the photos I'm looking at do include firearms for like concealed carry. Right. But a lot of them don't. It's just like the stuff that you carry uh, in your everyday person. Yeah. Yeah. Or specific to so, a certain type of trip. So do you want to share? I'm going to do a pocket dump. You're going to do you a pocket two. dump? We'll, we'll do a picture of this, maybe. While you're setting we'll that up. So I use DuckDuckGo as my search engine instead of Google. We can talk about that later. But I just searched the words pocket dump on DuckDuckGo. Okay. And it brings up pocketdump.net. Okay. And the catchphrase at the top feels really succinct. The everyday carry items that define your life. There okay. you go. All right. Yeah. So I mean, I'd imagine like people, and it can be interesting too. It can be it can be telling of uh, a pocket dump can be telling of the person dumping their pockets. Like what what do you do for a living, and that's going to affect what you're carrying with you every day. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so here's I'll start out. Okay. So so phone. Okay. iPhone right there. I have a wallet attached to it. So basically, it's just the the case of the phone can hold like three cards and it has a money clip on it. Yep. I don't carry a wallet. That's what I carry. So I've got a driver's license, a credit card, room for another. Like if I'm going to Costco, I can bring that with me. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, I carry a pin with me everywhere I go. Do you have a rationale as to why that pin? Sure. So this is a, the Pilot Metropolitan. 
Okay. Uh, it's it's a relatively inexpensive um, uh, aluminum pen. So it's a, it gives you a metal body, so it's it's durable. I've had it. It's scratched up. You can tell I've had it for a while. Yeah. Uh, it is a fountain pen. I just enjoy fountain pens. Um, and that's, that's sort of like a separate hobby of mine. Uh, to go along with that is, oh, so maybe I'll do this by pocket. All right. So my, my right hip pocket goes the phone. <laughs> okay. This is really fun. <laughs> and my, my Jaybird wireless earbuds. Okay. So those are in my right hip pocket. All right. And then moving around the, the, uh, we'll go to the back right pocket. Amazon says I can get that pen for eighteen dollars. Yeah, it is for 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 a very reliable fountain pen. Eighteen bucks is super cheap. I have my Rodia notebook that has not just acid free paper, but it's 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 a paper that is that is very well used with a fountain pen, so it, it doesn't does not bleed through, which fountain pens do that. Nice. Um, so anyway, I carry that with me. Left rear pocket, I carry, like every good Boy Scout should, a handkerchief. Okay. And then, that's kind of self-explanatory, I think. All right. And then the, the left front pocket is where it gets serious. Uh-oh. So that's, that's where the pin lives. Okay. It's in the right front pocket that I've already covered. I have a Leatherman Skeletal clipped to the pocket next to the pin. Okay. The pin goes uh, about half of the week. I'm wearing a shirt with a pocket in it. The okay. pin goes on that pocket. Clipped next to that, I always carry a flashlight. A lot of people out there thinking my phone has a flashlight. I was thinking that about the notebook. Higher Why lumens. Would I care about? Yeah, higher lumens. Yeah. It, it is, uh, I mean, if you have been using your phone as a flashlight and you're in a situation, especially if you have kids and you're fishing something out from under a couch, anything like that, and you use an actual flashlight, it is just, it's a world of difference. Yeah. This one, it's, it also has, it's magnetic, so I can also stick it on things, which comes in handy. My <laughs> wife makes fun of me for about half this stuff that I carry. Um, but the reality is, like, the pen is every day. The skeletal is pretty much every day with everything it has on it. The flashlight, I probably use maybe three times a week or so, something okay. like that. But it's also the convenience of having it on you and you know that it's on you means that like when it's like when we leave here tonight, we don't have lights in this parking lot. And instead of tripping over stairs or whatever, I literally like in a millisecond can pull out a flashlight and just have it. Yeah. So, so that's cool. Uh, the Tic Tacs, which we've covered, I usually have Tic Tacs on me as well. Um, Digging deeper into the pocket here. There's more? There's there's a little more. I have an albuterol <laughs> rescue inhaler. Okay. It's part of my everyday carry. My keys. Yep. Clip on a left belt loop, and then I kind of like tuck them into my back pocket so they don't jingle around. I use a, uh, a key smart key organizer. What is that? It is a, uh, you can kind of like turn your keys into like a, into a multi-tool oh, okay. kind of kind of. I've outfit. never seen that. So, you know, I used to wear button-up dress shirts for a period of for for work. Uh, I don't miss it, but I did like having the pocket on the front button. I use yeah, like or the a, the pen. I'm sorry, the pen oh, the in the pen, pocket the on, the the front pocket on the front. I could do that with some of my shirts now, but it doesn't look as good as it does on a long sleeve. True, true. Shirt. I've decided like like when I buy a new T-shirt these days, I buy a pocket T-shirt and yeah, I put a pen in the pocket T-shirt. Uh, so and then I always have nail clippers on my key ring. The keys dangle from a key smart dangle dangler thinger. I have so little in my pockets compared to. So I mean, this is this tells you like the thing that hangs from my belt loop that my keys are attached to. I probably researched for over an hour on what I want that to be. This is fascinating. Okay. I like j- just for example. And I, I have a watch that I always wear. I can totally not, see why this is interesting to people. Yeah. But I'm interested in why you think because you've been following it longer than I have. Uh-huh. These some of these pictures I've been scrolling through while you're talking. It's actually really cool to see 
the stuff people carry. It is. I I can't explain exactly why it's interesting. I don't know what the I, draw is, but I could. I, but it is. But it is. It almost feels like a like a really nice catalog where you're seeing things assembled that all make sense. Yeah. Like if you're flipping through an REI, like accessories catalog and you get to a whole yeah. like two page spread and it's just these things have properly set up. that's what the photos remind me of it's like yeah. a nice photo shoot of here's some things that you should have for this type of thing but do you think it's like material i'm not saying you specifically mm-hmm. but do you think it's like <coughs> materialism because some of these oh, people definitely. clearly are like matching all their things well, their, that's their not knives and their wallets and their like it, I, I, I don't think, mean it necessarily even in a mean way. It's just cool to see your stuff. Yeah. No, th- there's, I mean, a- anything like that. Yeah, there's a lot of materialism that goes along. There's there's a lot of people who are buying things because they're jealous. And yes, that happens. Um, but it uh, doesn't have to be that way. I think it's, I could totally see myself getting into this. As much as I've thought about the concept of a go bag. <laughs> like yeah. I'm not necessarily a doomsday prepper. I'm not necessarily. I'm definitely not a doomsday prepper. But the idea of a go bag, I think maybe I like the idea of it more. Like have one in your car, have one in your house, mm-hmm. a go bag. I got friends that have a go bag. Yeah. It, yeah. it would just be, I mean, I think for me, it would just be cool and fun to like buy some kind of a tactical bag. Yeah. And then outfit it. Yeah. Even if I never use the stupid thing. Sure. It would be it would be fun. I don't know why it would be fun. Lights start going off in my brain. Do you think that's the little boy in all of us that would like go in the backyard and be a soldier or a adventurer? Or is that part of it? Maybe Could I'm be. not. I guess I'm overanalyzing too much. I think much, maybe. I, well, yeah. Who, I think it's probably want to be superheroes. I think it's probably the same kind of explanation. Yeah. Is it just a combination of it's cool but still practical? You yeah. can justify it to uh, a well, degree. Certainly that. You can justify it with practicality. Like, you know, we've we've talked a lot about our friend Jeremy who came on for a couple episodes and when yeah. he was here he had he had his whole bag, backpack planned out like a bunch of photo cool like photo accessories and stuff in his yeah. bag. Um, yeah, we'll have to have him comment on one of our posts with some of the stuff he yeah. carries. He pulled like, out some dude wipes and shared them with us. Yeah. Dude wipes. Super practical. Yeah. So I could, I could easily see, cause like I'm looking at some of these, I already have 70% of some of these EDCs that I don't necessarily always carry, but it's, it's cool. I could see myself getting in, lost in the rabbit trail of that. So if any of our listeners out there want to post pictures of their EDC or only if you've thought about it, you can't just empty your pockets. Like you have to, there has to be intentionality behind why you have what you have. We're going to, we're going to send, we're going to post a picture of Kendall's everyday carry. So either before we leave or separately with a cool background, he'll take a picture for us. Would it be minimalist of me to just say it's phone wallet keys? If that's your EDC, that's your EDC. That's literally the only things that I take every day. Phone wallet keys. There you go. Your EDC my, is phone wallet keys. My phone has no case on it, so it's very minimal. I think it's fun for me. It's more fun for me if I'm going on a camping, hunting, or hiking trip. Because sure. you've got stuff that you wouldn't normally carry that just kind of look cool all laid out together. Right. And so when you're like, you know, a knife or a multi-tool, for me it's like a Gerber multi-tool. Um, or like hunting stuff, animal calls, or ropes yeah. or whatever. Is there a whole category? Maybe that's, that's why you lay it. Yeah. That's why you lay it out and that's why you want it to look neat. Yeah. Because when you're done, you have that moment of, that looks awesome. Yeah. Why is why does that look awesome though? I'm so interested. <laughs> I'm just thinking that there should be a whole category of fake ones. <laughs> and there's like that's a, a, good idea. a plasma TV on a bed <laughs> and a chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> or people that have super strange jobs and tools for their a job. Hair, a hair straightener, like, yeah, that just, no one else would have. Just all phony ones. <laughs> Sitting next to a rabbit and see if anybody comes up <laughs> upon themselves. Yeah. That's really funny. That could be a whole thing. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. Faux EDC, F A U X EDC. Let's start a new hashtag. It probably already exists. Yeah, probably just like bird life. I, I can't think of anything original anymore. <laughs> I got nothing. Well, that's oh, real quick. For real, I wanted to mention it last time. And it, so my my birthday was a couple weeks ago. Happy belated birthday. Yeah. Uh, for my birthday, my wife, instead of buying really a gift for me, she bought a birthday hat. 
for the bird. What? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No pictures yet because he won't wear the stupid thing. <laughs> yeah. We got a bird hat. <laughs> yeah, there's a bird hat in there. We're house. coming up in the world. There we are. We thought we'd have to monetize our podcast to make that happen, but thanks a lot. There's Amy. more hats. There's more hats I need. Oh, okay. I need the bird hat, the, the, the birthday hat. I want to get him to wear that so that, like, when the twins' birthday comes up, that we're wearing that. You got to get him to but wear man, it and post a picture. I want to get a Christmas hat for the bird. I want to get a Halloween hat for the bird. I want to get a top hat to celebrate New Year's with yeah. the bird. Can the first picture of the bird please be on our From the Middle? Yes. Social media. T- Toby's accounts. Toby's more popular than any of us. For more, sure. More people have asked about the bird and the bird leash. Yeah. That for is sure. that is true. Toby's doing well, everybody. Just so you know. Yeah. He's growing some new flight feathers. And and uh and he's he's uh he's flying more Can't at will him. now. No, he can't. <laughs> I'm kidding. He can't. <laughs> he can't. Been blessed with the gift oh, of flight. Yeah, I see what Thanks you, you made. A, me you made a little cage. joke there, and I yeah, missed it. I rolled right. right past it. It's all right. My apologies. Yeah, right. My apologize. My apologies. It's all good. It's okay. Here you go, Corey. It's for you. Yeah, no. I'll, well, when he learns to wear a hat on his own, we'll. Uh, That's fun. I can't There'll wait. There'll be a to picture coming. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait. wait. That's great. Super excited. Anyway, okay, I'm sorry. I had to say that. No, that's all good. Go um, ahead. What else is going on? I talked about Colorado. We talked about characters. We talked about EDC. Oh, we were going to talk about food a little bit, maybe. Well, yeah, you you mentioned snooze. Yeah, I got snooze. to go back to snooze. Yes. Yeah. Which was going to be a segue to you. So you said you've been watching some cooking shows for all of you who like cooking shows oh, out there. Oh, man. I just, I think my wife and I are both suckers for anything food related on Netflix and they seem to have the best. They have like the whole bevy pun intended of like food shows that you could want to watch. Uh, and so I would love to hear if, if anybody has recommendations for great food shows on anything streaming, please let us know in the comments and just say, Hey Dylan, you got to check this out. But so like <clears throat> there's a lot of different things we've been watching, but I want to start with the movie chef. And if you're into cooking at all, if you're asking yourself, why should I watch Chef, right? There's going to be a lot of those. If you're into cooking at all, John Favreau is a chef. John Leguizamo is is, is kind of sous chef or whatever. And they start a food truck. It's a great movie. It's like this. uh, It's family friend driven, but they're experiencing all these new things. So the movie Chef came out a few years back. It's really, really good. Definitely check it out. I don't know what it's streaming on. Just look it up. But Netflix created a kind of spinoff of that where Chef was actually a movie, a scripted movie. It's called drama. Uh, The Chef Show on Netflix is still Jon Favreau, uh, but he's actually with uh, Roy Choi, and I might be saying that wrong. I'll say Chef Choi, uh, who was a chef in L.A. He has a a Korean heritage. And so uh, Chef Choi was blending all these, like, Korean taco like all this kind of culture that surrounds LA into this uh, food truck called Kog- Koji, Kogi. Uh, and so, Koji. yeah, chef, exactly. So <laughs> chef Choi cool. would show up on the sets of some of these Marvel movies that John Favreau was working on. And like John Favreau actually learned how to be a chef. He's actually a really good cook. They became friends. So the chef show is this kind of documentary series where they're like cooking with each other. Um, and John Favreau is even like showing chef Choi some really cool stuff. And then they're like hanging out with other chefs it's like super casual really laid back but there's so many great food shows i know a lot of people watch like the great british cook-off bake-off yeah the american one there's like sugar rush there's um uh zumbos just desserts uh but there's so many good chef shows and cooking shows on there i tend to get into the ones that are a little more serious in nature like Mm -hmm. the cook-off cutesy Competition ones are fine, mm-hmm. um, but like Chef's Table is a documentary series that's really good. Uh, it's a Netflix original thing where they're basically every episode they're profiling a different chef, and so there's it, it's kind of in the vein of Chef Show, but that one's more lighthearted. Uh, Chef's Table is much more serious, and it's like these top chefs around the world. Uh, and I just th- these shows are so good, and there's so many there's so much variety in how they're presenting this material and what kind of foods they're they're covering. I just find it super interesting. I find it interesting that they're so popular, and I I like them as well. But it fascinates me that the best part of food is sm- smelling it and tasting it, mm-hmm. and you can't do that. Well, but I I, th- I think. 
Right, you can't do that, but you can you can cook, and you have to learn how to cook for sure. And, and for people who like enjoy cooking as a hobby, yeah, like they, I think that's who the, those shows are but, for. I don't disagree, and again, I like a lot of them, but especially the competition ones where you're like they're being judged on the the quality of their food ver- over someone else's. It's fascinating to me that the in quotes here payoff of other shows, competition shows, is the adventure or the or you make something so it's, there's more of a visual element or shows like competition shows like Alone, where you're surviving in nature, which is one of my favorite shows right now on the History Channel. These food shows, like the best part of it, I agree, you're learning and you're learning new ways to cook things or or the chemistry of cooking. Um, but it's just so interesting to me that like it just makes my mouth water while I'm watching them. And I yeah. just want to I just want to participate <laughs> with the show, but I can't because the payoff is the biggest payoff is the smelling it and eating it. That's a good thing. I, I, th- I think that's I think you're right. But it, it it there's still a lot to be said about learning the preparation. element. Oh, sure. And the presentation element. Sure. Because those are still really big aspects. Seeing the dish. Why do we all take pictures and share pictures of food on social media when none of those people are going to try it? Presentation. Presentation. We want to share what we're doing with other people. And there's a lot of really great, um, you know, kind of follow along food shows too. Like Somebody Feed Phil is really interesting. Oh, that's a good one. Um, He is the, I forget his last name, but he's the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. Who's sort of an admitted like Phil Rosenthal? Phil Rosenthal, yeah. He's sort of like a self professed foodie. He doesn't claim to be an expert. And actually, I think the way I pitched the show to you initially was like his his enthusiasm about food. He's never really negative in the show. It's not about being critical. His enthusiasm in the show feels cheesy at first, but the more you watch, the more genuine it feels. Yeah, he's a really sweet, kind of goofy guy. Yeah. And he's very relatable, so he just likes the interaction. And it, he does a lot of street food. So he'll go to a yes. place, and it's mostly street food. Yeah. But, like, some of the best street food around the planet. Yeah, and that's exact. That's whole, his whole thing versus, like, a show like Ugly Delicious, which is a, the chef David Chang. That's, like, a chef's, a kind of a lazy, edgy chef's. He has this persona about him that he's not lazy, but he is, and he's edgy, and he's not. And, like, his view of some of the world and what's changing where he has a totally different view viewpoint than Phil Rosenthal who's you kind know, of your every man your every traveler man. yeah yeah and then you've got David Chang who's a little rough around the edges but then he talks about you know at one point in Ugly Delicious uh, which is his show he's talking about I like Domino's because the best critics and chefs in the world say I shouldn't like it and I don't like being told what I can or can't like so I go. like to order Domino's and eat that <laughs> you know and so Uh, it's just, I love all of this. Like, you know, we talked about, uh, in a previous episode, how, like, is there any original good content? I don't, I don't know if this is good in the sense that it's groundbreaking, but it's so interesting. We're literally just breaking down food. And really at the end of the day, the way that all of these people make their food taste good is get the freshest ingredients as possible and throw as much butter, salt, and sugar as you can in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, that's it. That's flavor. It's just yeah. the, 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 the main core things we love in way larger amounts than we would ever use cooking from home. And that's why restaurant food tastes better. Because there's so much more butter, sugar, and salt than we would ever put in stuff. It's the Paula Dean method of cooking. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. generous portions of those three things. But yeah. it's just, I, I love it. I, I think these shows are, like, so interesting. I, I know lots of people watch the baking stuff, and that's a lot of the presentation. Like, right. people who love seeing these big cakes and desserts. And, you know, I just, I, I think it's fascinating. And it's probably a little bit of, like, why we enjoy comedy being dissected from behind the scenes. Sure. Like, you're seeing this, like, it's not just the literal recipe. You're actually seeing the thought process behind why yeah, why things are being done the way that they're being done and you're kind of, you're 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 seeing the you're seeing inside the head of a chef for a moment yeah yeah or just somebody who really knows a lot about that thing right which which for me makes sense why I gravitate towards the ones that are more visual so a bunch of years ago it was like cake boss that was a competition show well no that wasn't a competition show but there are other cake competition shows where it's about the presentation and these creative uses of color and design in the cake itself. So they'd have the challenge of the client and it's his 14th birthday and he loves GI Joe. So make the coolest GI Joe. And there was like sculpting and painting it. And 
and you, you it was I'm, it has to taste good, but it was less about the taste. It was more right. about the presentation. Similarly, there was a show called Face Off, where it was makeup artists from around the world would compete, and they'd be given a challenge, make a tribal creature, um, and they'd have to do makeup and sculpting and, and like create masks and feather, like just all this craziness. So I've always gravitated towards the shows that are more visual in nature, but that makes sense why like you like that, and it, it makes sense why people like these shows so much. Yeah. There's, and that level of competition is kind of fun. But when it becomes more about the competition than the quality of the thing, because it's like, here are 44 ingredients. You have 13 minutes. Go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like, less my thing. Eh. Than I enjoy the dissection of the process and the food and the discussion of the food itself uh, more than the contest of it. I don't necessarily need to see a challenge. I know a lot of people like the Great British bake off or whatever that is like they like the challenge aspect of it uh, to me it's like it's a little more what somebody feed phil and um the chef show and ugly delicious like they're breaking down like why are tacos so popular why is that yeah. such a popular food right now hmm. and it, it's funny because at one point uh chef chang is riding in the car with these sort of food critics around la and they're doing different things and he kind of doesn't get the taco thing like he's he has a korean background it's not really part of his food thing and, and they're trying to describe to him why tacos are such a big deal and i don't know at some point somebody just says says it better than all the critics could say it and it was um i think chef Choi was in that episode and uh, he just goes nobody hates a taco you'll <laughs> never meet anybody who hates a taco and that was like it was such a simple thing that it's like yeah i get it do they it have a like, rationale why why the taco thing? Watch the episode. Okay. Ugly Delicious. There's a whole episode on just tacos. But um, the I, I I literally, we were dissecting the episode, my wife and I, after. And I'm like, I don't know. It's interesting. Ta- discussing kind of other things that go behind it. Like, why is Taco Bell still cool and Del Taco still cool, even though they're nothing like authentic tacos? Right. And why tacos, like, permeated into this, like, this whole... Southwest barbecue, Austin, Texas. It's not just Mexican style tacos. It's just such a easy, small, fast, cheap vessel for food. Yeah, make your own. There's a you can put anything in it. You can put eggs, bacon, and cheese in a tortilla. Exactly, and eat a taco. There's a guy on on YouTube that I so I actually follow a number of of uh, cooking shows on YouTube. Um, Do you have any favorites you want to share? One of my favorites. While we're talking, this is why I wanted to, oh, to jump in now. Uh, Sam, the cooking guy. Okay. He used to have a show, I think, on Food Network, and it uh, the guy is he's he's a little off putting. Like you have to, I think, get used to to who he is. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I, I actually have grown to appreciate him. But he cooks for the most part. He's cooking in his backyard. Um, and but he owns a restaurant uh, called in San Diego called Not Not Tacos. So like they're <laughs> they're not not tacos, right? <laughs> and it, it speaks to this. So like what he specializes in are tacos that uh, that like there there is not not a taco. It's a tortilla with stuff in it. So I'm going to call it a taco. And so he makes like a cheeseburger taco. And uh, and other kinds of tacos that are, but but they're always like they're elevated a little bit, right? Yeah. Because that's what they do um, to sell them. So, like I, I'm pretty sure he's got like a couple different Asian fusion tacos that he does, and um, and so forth. So, uh, barbecue tacos and and things. But anyway, Sam the cooking guy is a guy that I appreciate. Um, but yeah, to to speak to tacos specifically and him, like his whole attitude toward food is. Is that that like? Don't worry about authentic. Worry about yeah, good. Yeah. And that's a lot of the discussion, like on that ugly, delicious show. Like, what is real pizza? And they're literally in Italy, and they're literally in New York, and they're breaking down. You know, and everyone's got a different opinion, right? So, like, what's authentic and what's not? And it, it kind of, as we were kind of watching it, I don't think they directly stated this, but you know, they're talking about the the literal like street food tacos, and then you've got these top 20 restaurants in the world serving their f- forms of elevated Mexican and taco f- and, and things like that. And th- talking about, is that still a taco or is it not? And, at, yeah. you know, and, and it can be whatever the flavors and whatever is authentic to 
the country. And it, it kind of occurred to me, and, and this is probably wrong, but it was a thought that I had. Um, all of these foods were simple, peasant, average, common foods anyways. Right. None of these things that we love started out as a high art form. There's nothing wrong with taking them there, in my opinion. Sure. But all of them started out as the things that everyone ate. That's why everyone eats them. Everyone ate pasta and ate basic pizza and ate a basic, you know, a burger and a taco. And none of these things were ever fine dining. It's fine that they scale to that. Right. But all of them are just so I'm I'm not pretentious at all when it comes to what is the most authentic version of that. I don't care. It's whatever people enjoy. Yeah. And so I think that but I still I still love the discussion that swirls around it. You know, they're talking about. In one episode, there's this restaurant across from the founder of Taco Bell that he would, you know, he wanted to set up a burger shop, but McDonald's was just down the block. So he would go to this Mexican restaurant every day. And that wasn't technically authentic because they were just working with the ingredients they had locally. Mm -hmm. But he'd go eat there and then eventually started Taco Bell and scaled what was at that restaurant. But that wasn't really exactly authentic. It was what was iceberg lettuce was available versus this and cheddar cheese versus whatever. And so it's just all of that discussion around it. It's just so interesting. That makes sense because for a history guy, right? You like. Yeah. Yeah. And there's that side of it. Like what? uh, Yeah. It's and so it's super fascinating and checking out if you're into food at all. Check out some of those shows that I mentioned. I think you'll really enjoy it if you haven't already. And if you have other ones I didn't mention. Yeah, I was, you know, me, I'm going to put the stand up comedy spin on it, right? So if you are interested in a marriage between food and stand up, um, Burt Kreischer has a show on YouTube called Something's Burning. And that's part of the All Things Comedy uh, channel. And they, he brings on comedians and celebrities and they just cook something together. One of his guests was Tom Papa, who's a well known comedian. Tom Papa is actually super into baking his own artisan breads, specifically sourdough. Really? And he has a show on the Food Network called Baked, where he brings on comedians and they just talk about bread and pastries, which is like right up my alley. Um, one of his <laughs> one of his guests was Jim Gaffigan, um, but he's like he's super into the science of bread making and how long the sourdough has to do this to just rise at the right level and get that crack right on the top of it, right? Yeah. Like, and so um, he, yeah, that's something that he's into. So those are just a few that I know of that that. Um, feature uh, stand-up comedians. Yeah, and there's a lot of, like, celebrity following, right? Like Wolfgang Puck and and Gordon Ramsay and Guy Fieri and a Mm -hmm. a lot of these names that are... And I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot. There's a lot, yeah. There's the really popular ones, and then you watch stuff like Chef's Table, and these are like, this is a high art form type. And then there's the stuff where you can get on YouTube and people are just making like binging with Babish is a really I love comment. Babbitt, yeah. You know, a lot of people watch that's just a dude breaking down how to make meals really quickly. That's if you want to learn how to cook, that's yeah. what binging with Babish is built for. Yep, that's exactly and, right. And I'm talking like from scratch. Like he just doesn't he doesn't if the recipe calls for mayonnaise, he makes the mayonnaise. Yeah, that's crazy. And like, Gordon Gordon Ramsay does a lot of like quick stuff. He'll show you how to make this or that, or yeah. he'll go into some. Like he went into some like farm in I think France or Spain where they were. It was a fish farm, but they were literally breeding uh, fish to make caviar farmed. Yeah, and they're saying like it's literally as good as the freshest caviar in the world. And he's sampling it and then using it to cook with. And like he does some real cool stuff too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't love Gordon Ramsay, but I like him a lot. I think he. Uh, he seems to really know what he's doing and have a good handle. Obviously, he's got a bunch of restaurants, but I mean, even it's not just a celebrity thing. Like, yeah, he, yeah, he, I like. His he stuff. actually knows what he's doing. Yeah. It's not, it's not all fake. Even though when you watch like the, when you watch the competition shows that he's a part of and that kind of thing, it's yeah, it's it's obvious that there is a lot of manufactured nonsense in those shows. But. Yes. His st- entertain forms I of still, entertainment are entertainment. I still entertainment. like them. <laughs> yeah, his his shows are entertainment. Right. His cooking skills are legitimate. Yes. Yeah, he dude knows what he's doing. So, but yeah, there's all kinds of YouTube stuff and people just trying foods all over the place. Lots of the like Delish and a lot of those networks and even BuzzFeed gets into these little videos about like what if we wanted to make a giant homemade Reese's peanut butter cup? <laughs> you know, how would you do that? I love it that I mean I like the idea that in our fast-paced world where you could just view food as a 
thing that you must do to survive and get through life and scarf down food and move on. I like that there's a realm of people who still view it as an art form and and break it down. Probably you could argue too much, but I love that that there's still pride in something that we all have to do every day. Sure. And I'm thinking specifically about we would be remiss if we didn't mention Sebastian Maniscalco, but he said that that that's his hobby and he likes to like it's a three hour thing and he likes to have four or five things going at once. And by the time it's all said and done, there's like 14 things that he's made from scratch. And it's just, it's the way that he like decompresses and it is his yoga. It is his fishing or whatever. He likes just getting in the kitchen and just the experience of that and the sense of that. And, and, uh, I just like that that exists and maybe that's the artist in me, but I just think it's cool that whatever your thing is, that you get so into that that hobby or that thing that that uh, there's opinions about it and this tool works better than this one and all these subcultures yeah. that 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 are more accessible now because of the internet and shows like whatever your thing is if you're deep into everyday carry hey there's a there's a subculture for that yeah, yeah. if you're deep into cooking there's a billion subcultures for that a specific niche type of c- cooking um, one of the things i always thought would be interesting is um, because uh, I think it was Rachel Ray who has like one cookbook that's like uh, something about cookbooks based on time. So if you only have this amount of time, here are recipes you can make in that amount of time. I think there should be one, maybe it's online, where you can enter the ingredients you have in your fridge and it puts it into an algorithm and says, here's what you can make with that. Mm-hmm. Like a cookbook based on what you have. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. like time. Or not like there's a that's six an amazing m- idea. Yeah, there's not like a, there's one that's like six ingredient recipes. Like forget all that. Just enter into something what you have. I love that. Yeah. So I'm 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 trademarking that right now. If it if it doesn't exist already, that was my idea, and I expect full royalties. But it's it it would be cool. Like, so if I have cold spaghetti in a tortilla, <laughs> you yeah. have a spaghetti burrito. That's what I. <laughs> right. Or a or. cold sorry a cold spaghetti burrito. That's or an you, actual thing I've eaten, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> or, or you can have you can have a uh, Mexican spaghetti. Yeah. Chop sure. up the tortilla, fry it up. Yeah. Put it on top like crisps. Put on, it on top, top of like the spaghetti. Crisps on top of the spaghetti. Yeah. I, I look. I, we've talked about it before. I'm an amateur foodie, but I can eat down to a dollar <laughs> menu. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to be more than an amateur foodie, but I can eat down to a box of macaroni and cheese or dollar menu items yeah. or chips or putting cold spaghetti in a tortilla. Mm-hmm. Spe- to spe- my wife's disgust. Speaking of Taco Bell, let's talk about that hotel. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So there's a... Where's my, oh, my phone's over here on the table instead of in my pocket. While you're looking that up too, I think to, to end to final... Uh, to bring a final note to all of the presentation and yeah. all the thought that goes into it, uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that we have a sister who is incredibly good at baking. Yes. And she's been awesome at like that combination of a great flavor with great presentation, yes. doing everything that she does with kindness and soul and care. And yep. Yeah. So, so if you are in central Ohio, look up kindness batters. See what she did there? Not mm. kindness matters. Kindness batters. Look her up, her stuff. It looks stunning, and you're like, there's no way that the, f- that the cake can taste as good as that looks. It absolutely 100% does. Every single person that I have sent her way has been like, oh, my gosh, why didn't I know about her cakes sooner? So if you're in central Ohio at all, look up Kindness Batters, our sister Katie. Her stuff rocks. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, and I wouldn't. I genuinely would not recommend something if it looked good but didn't taste good. I just wouldn't even say it. Yeah. Because I don't like when a cake looks good and then it's hard and because they put so much way, fondant. Yeah, way and, too much fondant. And it's just not, it, the flavor is not great. No, it's genuinely fantastic. So yeah. uh, like her page no matter where you are and then try to order some cakes yeah. if you're nearby. That's a good point. You should like her page regardless because she's going to post like tips and tricks and stuff for baking cakes. So even if you're too far away to order one from her, uh, definitely follow her page. Um, but then if you are close at all, it's worth an hour and a half, two hour drive to meet her and, and get yourself a cake because they're, 
They're super, super good. They're the good. bomb. All right. Right on. Speaking of sisters baking things. Yeah. I have a sister who just had a just had a little boy yesterday. Yay! Yeah. So that's fun. Congratulations. What's the name to of our future middler? Max. Max. Little Max. No doubt going to be a fan of the show. Indeed. Indeed. T- two day two day friend of the show. All right. So here's this article. It's from WSBT22. Looks like a CBS affiliate in Palm Springs. California, which I, I don't know if that's where the hotel is, but there's there there is a Taco Bell hotel and resort. <laughs> I, I love, love the and resort. <laughs> Taco Bell hotel and resort, and the headline says it sold out in two minutes. Whoa! Went online two minutes. Done from hot sauce shaped pool floaties. To Baja Blast inspired manicures. Uh, wow. Guests also enjoy exclusive menu items. The Taco Bell and Resort. In it, it, okay, so the, the resort is in Palm Springs. Wow. Yeah, your key card looks like sauce packets, hot sauce packets. <laughs> I wonder when they say <laughs> sold out, I, I wonder for how long. Like for a year? That's a good question. That's it, a good question. I'm going to do some. Dylan, you got to. Now, the. So Taco Bell had a location, like a normal restaurant, but in Vegas uh-huh. that served alcohol. Okay. Okay. So you could get all kinds of mixed drinks, and that actually became like a wedding destination. Oh, my God. Because people were there. They were going to get married anyways. They can go have some drinks and enjoy their favorite Taco Bell. Sure. And so I think that led to this. And what's crazy uh, Taco Bell also released a line of clothing, <laughs> like hats and shirts and stuff like that. Which you can buy at the gift shop I, at the Taco I, Bell. Yeah, so I legitimately went on there to see, like, I'm just curious what's on there. And it's actually some kind of cool looking, <laughs> like, of stuff. Of course it is. Like, I, Taco Bell somehow figures out how to remain trendy. They uh, know exactly what they are and what they aren't. They own the crap out of it. Yeah. They and know they what they just, are and they know what they aren't. They market really well. Yeah. And uh, I funny. genuinely, there was a shirt that I actually considered buying. I don't even remember what it looked like now. Sold out. Most of the stuff was sold out on their website. You you and Bree have to go. And well, like, hold up. This is a four-night only hotel. Four-night only? That's what, it, that's what it, I just read. So it looks like, so when they said it sold out, they meant it sold out. Because there was only four nights available. A, yeah, but like, yeah. Yeah, like, like scrolling through the pictures and stuff, it's like the, the rooms are all decorated and painted appropriately. Wait, I'm confused. There was only four nights available it, to book, probably with however many rooms. It sounds like there was a hotel and resort. I don't, I don't know this. This is me guessing because I've read the entire short article. Um, it sounds like there is an existing hotel and resort that Taco Bell basically rented they put a taco bell drape over everything exactly i thought you meant it was a four night minimum oh no (laughs) no but that's so so much room this is only existing for four nights that's what that's what it sounds like only existing for four nights uh and shame and i think it's already over i think it was august 8th through 12th wow I, I mean, so I actually, sorry, everybody I read some you. of the write up. No, it's okay. I read some of the write up on that, and it was sort of like a. I got the sense it was kind of a marketing ploy uh, for just that, you know, let's oh, throw course. Taco Bell themed everything on top of this hotel for a few days. You think? But, but, <laughs> well, the, yeah. so the person asked as a follow up, like, so would you ever actually like consider opening something like this? And they're like, oh, we're always open to ideas like that. Sure. Like, this is something, everything's a Do test. Do it. Do Basically, it. the Vegas Taco Bell restaurant serving alcohol is a test. Everything's a test. Yeah. Well, Columbus we'll has, a, has the the beer themed resort situation, right? Brewdog. Brewdog. Yeah. Yeah. So Brewdog, they're uh, they're a Scottish brewery. Their Columbus headquarter, or their U.S. headquarters, is in Columbus. And uh, I think there's beer tap in your room. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, you can stay there. They have a hotel resort. It's a yeah. little, it's it's a few minutes out from downtown because it's on the southeast. It's outside of southeast Columbus. It's yeah. a cool spot. So, so you're, yeah, it's it's nice. Like they what have a dog it? park and they have yeah. some outdoor s- spots you can hang out. There's well, not the dogs, a lot around it. The dogs are allowed inside. and Yeah, there's not a lot around it. So you s- sort of enjoy what's at the resort brewery yeah 
a little bit and then probably head into Columbus or Easton or whatever to do other things. That's funny. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Taco Bell. You're, you're a brewery and decided to set up a resort. Why not? Yeah. That's Go for fun. it. Do you guys have anything else we want to chat about before we wind it on down? Oh, not today. All right. Another day. Well, um, one more shout out. We we mentioned our sister Katie earlier and her cakes. We have to shout out Samson again. It's been a minute since we've uh, mentioned him. We so appreciate you lending us uh, uh, your music. So we've taken a clip from his song Movement for our intro. We really appreciate that, brother. So uh, follow him at Samson, S-A-M-S-I-N-1-1-1 on Instagram. And he's on SoundCloud as well. So really appreciate you. Uh, hit us up. We are, I say this every time, but every time we get a little more, um, we're loving the interaction. You guys are, um, responding to our Instagram posts and our social media posts and, um, keep it up. So follow us at from the mid pod on all the social media sites. You can email us directly at from the middle at protonmail.com. And then we also regularly post a link where you can send us a voicemail. And we will use that audio bite on our show. So that could be a question. Um, that, sh- that could be something that you want to talk to us about or a topic that you would like for us to discuss. Um, click that link. It sends you right to a... Um, if you're using your phone, it sends you right to a page where it accesses your uh, microphone and you can just record a voicemail right there. It's super easy. We would love uh, to interact with you guys in that way. Do you want to add anything else? No, that's, that's it. Th- those types of interactions are... Or I think what what's the most fun? It is yeah for us. It it what it's what makes us feel like that we're not just talking to like a <laughs> head count, right? Yeah, so that's that's all we get. Otherwise, is you have you have you've had 150 people listen and blah blah blah. I'm like, well, that's boring. Yeah. What we want is is to to, to interact with you guys. Yeah. So and also, and some people have asked like, hey, what if I'm just being sarcastic or funny? Hey, do it. That's all. Totally yeah. fine. Anything. Anything's fine. Also, check out our YouTube page. Go over there and subscribe. We throw all the episodes on there if you want to listen. Uh, but I, I want to do some video stuff on there. We have some ideas. We have some ideas some, of some, some stuff video that we stuff. want to throw on YouTube. Uh, just throw a couple subscribes on there for now, and uh, and that'll give us an idea that people are looking at it, so it'll make sense to throw some videos on there. Yes. Awesome. Well, rate, review, listen, tell a friend. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. This has been From the Middle. <laughs>